Hi, I'm Les O'Reilly, and today I'm going to take you through the carbonate switcher that you're going to find in Edit 1 here at the space. First thing, let's take a tour of the product switcher and the auxiliary items that come along with it. First up is your production switcher surface. So this is a carbonate 1ME production switcher. You have a preset bus, a program bus, and a key delegation bus that's used for assigning your aux buses and controlling your custom control macros, your single button presses. Now, if I wanted to change between two cameras, I would simply select a different camera in preset than the one that's on program, and then just change the background. Seeing that my preview shows me the image that I want, and when I hit cut, it takes it to air. I could also hot punch on the program bus. So the program bus and the preset bus work as a pair, allowing you to transition from one source to another using things like wipes, DVE transitions, and even media wipe transitions, which we'll get into a bit later. You can use it by just pressing the cut, the auto trans, which will run whatever is selected at that pre-programmed rate, or of course, moving the fader handle itself. The transition control area allows me to select which background or key layers are also included. So this bus can delegate to my keyer control, allowing me to select the source that I want in it, in this case the graphics system, and what key type that I'm going to use. If I include it in the next transition, my preview window will show me the video of the background as well as the video of the key source. In this case, there's nothing currently loaded because we're going to transition it off air. So upon performing the transition, the key removes from air and the background transition takes place. So that's simply how you use the transition area and how it works with the buses to give you video on screen. To the right are direct access buttons for your key layers, being able to independently cut or auto-trans those layers on air. So very simple to just cut the key on or dissolve the key off. Or dissolve it on, cut it off, any order in which you choose. What's nice is there is also a mnemonic, which will show you exactly what source is located in each keyer that you're about to take on or off. Key 1 is always the bottom layer. It's the first layer on top of the background bus, followed by key 2, then key 3, and finally the topmost layer, which would be key 4. This screen is our view control screen. So not only does it act as my multi-viewer, allowing me to visually see the sources that are currently on air, but it also allows me to interact with the sources directly. So as you can see, there's a blue halo around the program screen. That means that the focus is currently on that. If I press a source on a screen, this is acting just like I'm hot punching on the physical bus, making it easy for me to select the source I want and cut it to air. If I select the preview screen, it will change the focus to the preset bus, allowing me to select a source, preview it, and then use the transition controls to transition it to air. So very much working the same as the hard area, but gives you a software interface, making it a little bit more visually attuned. What's nice is you can assign any source you want to the multi-viewer, and we'll cover how to do that later, making it easy to, to pick what you want and put it where you want, along with naming them. Again, we'll cover that a little bit later. The buttons around the outside are effects buttons, allowing me to assign buttons, give them images, and make it easier for me to get to those effects, like bringing in one of my anchor's lower thirds, making it very quick and simple to press the button and perform that transition. I can also transition and navigate my graphic system because I built buttons for that and gave them labels, or maybe I have other slates or effects that I want to call up really quickly, and it's easy with a visual connection to do that. On the right screen, we've got our dashboard. So this is our GUI that allows us to change and configure systems, 
as well as status monitor on the status menu and also follow along with a GUI of the menu system. So when I select wipe, I get my wipe menu, I can select the wipe type that I want and perform that transition. Similar if I am performing something with a keyer and I select a keyer, it will go to that key menu. If I change the key type, I will see that the key type changes, allowing me to simply select the keyer here as well. And I can change the key type, which is resembled here. I can transition the key right from the GUI as well. So as you can see, it's an interlink between the two, making it very easy to follow along with the screen. On it, you'll also find the expression graphics system. So this is the graphics engine that the switcher can control directly, and you can integrate the two as we were demonstrating before. As well as the internal media store engine, there is a GUI being able to control it, allowing you to see all your different thumbnails and control the four channels of Still Store, which again, we'll cover in a separate segment. So that gives you a bit of the overview of the devices and how they integrate and how they're being brought together.